This is Supercars Trackside on Fox Sports. Good afternoon. Great to have you with us here in Pit Lane at the Surfers Paradise paradise street circuit i should say only three rounds are left of season 2018 we are at the business end of the season there really isn't a more fitting venue as the championship battle intensifies we'll have a full preview of what's coming up here on the gold coast across the weekend and of course catch up on all the supercars news but first it is a very good afternoon to mark scape and russell lingle who join me good Hi, afternoon Jess. guys Hi, it is great to be back here on the gold coast Just walking up and down pit lane there's a real vibe in the air. everyone's Bit more relaxed, looking forward to the run home uh, to the season end in Newcastle. Now, Russ, you're a local here. You have one job and one job only this weekend. <sighs> Okay. What, is that, what is that, Jess? Turn the sunshine on. Oh, we no. have had so much rain up and down the yeah. eastern coast of Australia, which is good. We need the rain. Just a little bit of sunshine this weekend would be great. Get ready for it, guys. It's going to be 29 degrees on Saturday. So, Scafie, mm -hmm. get those shorts ready, mate. Oh, good get work. those white pegs out. Nice. <laughs> And yeah, we're sorry, we are in for a hot one this weekend for sure. And maybe a little bit of rain on Sunday, which we need a little bit of spice, okay. we need a little bit of wet stuff as well. But uh, how magnificent is this place as well when we come in here? And I've seen it develop over the last week, and they've got it so down pat now that they just whack it up so quick. But it looks spectacular, and, and well done to everyone uh, involved in this too. It looks great. Yeah. Good Great. afternoon, Jess. You've because been busy doing laps, haven't you? We've been you? doing sure laps, yes, making sure it's all, all sorted. Yeah. But it's, uh, it is a great facility, and, and obviously one of the things that Russell just said there, they've done a really nice job of being able to build this place as quickly as possible to minimise all the interruption around the Gold Coast. But I'm, I'm worried about what you reckon in terms of his control of the local area. I mean, you're talking about controlling the sun. Have you got that level of control here? I, mean, I know you're the quasi-mayor. I am the mayor of the Gold Coast. Well... Yeah. Second in Are line, you? and oh, well, I should be. Sure? I, I actually should be, and I'm sure you two would vote for me if yeah. that opportunity mm. ever arises. Yeah. Uh, but you're absolutely correct. Like I do the school run past here. Well, I won't say every day because Julia <laughs> probably say differently. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, they're so they're so swift and so quick and so rehearsed in putting this place up. So it does minimise the uh, impact, and uh, and. Everyone behind the, uh, gets behind this at the Gold Coast as well, which is great. And doesn't move on fast. Here we go. We've yep. just seen the highlights there of an incredible great race, all the drama around Dave Reynolds, all the drama around Craig Lowndes, and then straight after, two weeks later, bang, we're at a whole new, new venue. The whole thing moves on very quickly in our game. And how's the drama at this place? Yes. How Plenty some of, of the it. shunts has been around here, and I don't think it's going to be the last either, mind you. No. Totally. Well, we'll take a closer look at the circuit a little later on in the show. Plus, we'll be catching up with our seven-time Bathurst champion, Craig Lowndes. And while Lowndes has probably been riding on cloud nine the last ten or so days, uh, for David Reynolds, it's been a real time of recovery. We saw there uh, the utter heartache that he suffered at the Bathurst 1000 this year with uh, severe dehydration um, and exhaustion after leading the race for 112 laps. Uh, it was an incredible performance and such a tragic way for it to end for him and the whole team. Mark Larkham sat down with Dave for a bit of a debrief. Conversion off the line is done very nicely by Reynolds. He's got the whole shot. He's followed by his teammate. Di Pasquale's going to make it a Penrite and Erebus 1-2 into the first corner. When was it and what were the very first signs in the race when you thought, hey, something doesn't feel right? My first sign of, like, this is going to be a tough old day was about 10 laps in. That early? Yeah, that early, yeah. I started to lose concentration and focus. People at home that don't understand, when you say loss of concentration, what specifically were you struggling to think about? Things become a bit more blurry. You get a bit of tunnel vision. Everything's not sharp, you lose a bit of focus in your eyesight, you lose a bit of focus on your job, like what am I actually doing, you're kind of just on autopilot. When did it get to a point where you thought, now I'm in serious trouble? During the race I asked for a tear off, and they did it at one point, and my vision didn't get any better. So my window wasn't dirty, it was just my eyesight was bad. From where I was, I. I never got the feeling that he was incomprehensible or, well, he was indecisive, but that's Dave, he's always indecisive <laughs> on the radio. From his tone of voice, and I hear it every race, every scenario, he was still with us, if you know what I mean. Yep. The only issue we thought in our mind was he was cramping up. Looking at the data all through the stint, there was no excessive mistakes, just normal 
His pace was fast and consistent. We felt it was worth the, the punt to keep him in there. It's like 20 minute mark of the fourth quarter of the AFL Grand Final, you're not going to take your best player off the ground. So at what point did you believe that you were no longer capable of winning the race? Or did that ever happen in your head? <laughs> Unfortunately, at no point I ever thought about giving up. That's right, my own. that's an important consideration own, in all of this, isn't it? That's my own detriment though. Knowing what I knew at the time, seeing his data, hearing his voice, seeing his lap times, I still would have kept him in the car because for me that was what was going to get us the, the win, or the best, the only chance we had of keeping the win. Great job, Davey. Nice boy. It's all good here. Mate, I've got the world's biggest cramp in my leg in my life. Uh, he's got a problem, oh, he's, he's got, got a problem under brakes. So this is a change for the lead. David Reynolds has got a problem in the car. OK, mate, just do what you can to shake it out. He's got a massive cramp in his leg, David Reynolds. Well, when Lowndes got to me, I was... It was all sort of caving in, all my vision was getting worse. Um, and it was, I found it more difficult to concentrate. And when he got to me, that's when my foot cramped, or sorry, my calf cramped. And when he passed me, I was at 50% throttle, so... Unfortunately, I had to give up the race lead. I'm going to need something at the top, some sort of electrolyte drink, please. You may drink as much as you can, please. Drink as much as you can. If we need to put Luke in for the last bit, let me know. I'll try. So Luke Yulden is preparing to get in just in case. They might have to take David out of this car. How was the call ultimately made? Was it a collective or was something that you just put your foot down and said, no, this is what we're going to do? Or yeah, it was, we put a lot of faith in Al and the engineering group and Al. Um, I said to him at one point, let's get Luke in the car. We got, we're not going to win now. We've got to settle for the best position we can get. And then Al comes to me and said, oh, I actually think he's all right. I think we can probably get him out of this situation with some treatment at the pit stops and drinks. So I just backed Al's decision in that point. But um, yeah, that's, that's what we've got to do. Somebody's got to make the ultimate decision. We pay Alistair to make the decisions that win races. The pit stop because ultimately there was two things, wasn't there, in that stop. One, whether to leave you in the car or not, and two, the consequence of that leaving you in the car was the little error with your left leg, obviously some cramping. Just give us your take on the pit stop. So they gave me um, a drink. We were putting the fuel in. I selected first like you normally do, put, the foot, put my foot on the clutch, had the five second countdown, and in that five seconds, my left leg cramped so bad that I was in so much pain, I was trying to tell myself to keep it on the floor so I didn't spin the wheels and get a, a, a drive-through penalty, but yeah, I just couldn't couldn't hold the clutch in. Black flag pit lane penalty, black flag pit lane penalty, car nine for a pit stop infringement. We have a pit lane penalty for wheels spinning in a pit stop. Pit this lap, pit this lap for a drive-through. So sorry, man, I'll make cramps on the, on the clutch. At no point did I ever try and not win the race but it came to a point where I knew I couldn't push the pedals anymore. And that was after the drive through penalty. And yeah, I had to get out, because I probably would have crashed the car. He clearly gave us absolutely everything he had. And he's a very talented driver, very mentally strong driver, and he was willing himself to, to get to the end. He didn't want to give up, much like the rest of us, so he was there to win as well. And he wasn't gonna, uh, wasn't gonna take the easy route. Yeah, at no point did I ever want to give up. And, you know, I don't... I've been second there I've, and I've won the race before. I'd much prefer to win it. You know, we, were, we wanted to show everyone that our, our speed we had and we could go back to back. That was our, that was our goal of the weekend. And those scenes were incredibly tough to watch because we know how loved Davy is here in the pit lane. He's one of the great characters of our sport and they had put in a near faultless performance up to that point on Sunday at Bathurst. I know that the two of you have had an opportunity to speak with Dave and to debrief with the team. What's your take on how that all unfolded on Sunday? And I guess, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. What do you do differently? And, and how does this prepare them for next time? Because these endurance races year in, year out are challenging across a number of things and a number of platforms. So I, I think you've got to set the scene first because not often do we see the level of personal exertion and fatigue actually affect the outcome like we saw at Bathurst. So I think in the narrative of the great race, that's something that we haven't really seen before. And 
to do a triple stint, we, we both know how hard that is. They're shorter stints than they used to be, but two lots or three lots of those sprint race style stints, it's always going to be tough. But I, I, my thing is, and I, and I feel like they've left him too exposed. I mean, for me, he's taken the rap for that, and I don't think that's necessarily fair. I reckon the, the equity in the whole thing is much more team oriented, as well as Dave, because it becomes a matter of preparation and decision making. So, A, he lost a bucket load of weight on the way into the weekend. He was five kilos lighter. He did 35 appearances over the course of the weekend. Um, before it, he got to before, the race. Before he got to the race. Yeah. Um, he had, obviously, part of the schedule was, was all the media commitments. You know, he did a, a stack of stuff in Sydney before he got up there. Yeah. And then, when you get there and you're stressed by being the Bathurst champion, he didn't sleep. So the reality of his preparation, it couldn't have been worse. He was, he was fatigued before he got in the car. So then, to me, then the team comes in. Because, A, he doesn't drink through the course of the race. That's, that's a mistake. That's the team and but he, Dave. But he doesn't do that anywhere. I know, but he should. Yeah. So the reality is he doesn't drink. And then the two big kickers is that the ice wasn't filled up through the day for the cool suit. So he was basically in a hot suit, like a hot vest, and he had no helmet fan all day. So if you want to do a triple stint, you need the cool suit working and you need the helmet fan. It was a really interesting interview, I thought, like seeing the insights of it. And, and, and Davey's an honest guy. Mm. Like, he doesn't throw anyone under the bus and he's taken full responsibility for it. But I tell you what, I think the team has to take a bit of responsibility for this. Absolutely. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you know, y yes, it comes down to the driver, the car on the track, it's individual, all the rest of it. But those sort of decisions, like to me, when I was, I mean, you were sitting in the commentary booth. We were sitting there watching the race in the Fox Shed Air the whole time. As soon as we heard him coming over the radio, we knew there was an issue straight away. If we knew, and everyone else that I've spoken to, I've spoken to a lot of people from all walks of life, whether it be team owners, team managers or whatever, they said exactly the same thing. His very first communication indicated there was something wrong with him. It wasn't like he was indecisive. I, I, I don't get that. But uh, yeah, what do you make of those comments then from now where he said he was indecisive, not right. incoherent. Did you think he was incoherent? Absolutely. And I said to you, Jess, when we were watching it, we were watching it live, and I said, something wrong with Davey. I'd be pulling him out of the car. First thing we said, straight away. Yeah. So, so that was a mistake. That was a team mistake in making that decision. Barry Ryan said, he said he wanted to pull him out, but he went with Al. <laughs> well, like, he's, he's a team principal. Like, you've got to go with your gut feeling. He should have gone with his gut feeling with that one because he's probably got more experience in as far as that sort of thing goes, as far as race experience and old school, you know? And, and that's the mistakes, like, those sort of things. It's just not about having a fast car and a fast driver. You've got to make those sort of decisions on the fly. And that's what win or loses your championships, or win or loses your, the biggest race of the year, which is Bathurst. So, uh, yes, look... I get it. What our said says, we've got to leave our best shot in to win the race. So if they were going just for the win, leave them in, what they did, for sure. If you're just going for the win. But, hey, a podium's not bad. If you're going to get a podium, Luke Yordam was quite capable of getting a podium, no doubt about it. Luke's been quick all weekend, no yeah. doubt about it. He would have got that thing either second or third on the race. I, I still, if, I, if it was me as a team principal or, or the, the engineer, I would have said, put Luke in, go for the podium. But there's a duty of care. So the, so the actual issue is that what the worst case scenario didn't play out. Dave didn't crash the car. Yep. And there's a, an absolute duty of care around how you treat the driver in those circumstances. So I reckon there's a lot of equity between the team. It's not just a Dave Reynolds issue. Yeah, absolutely. A lot to learn from that whole incident. And I think plenty to bring into this weekend. Given that we're going to have uh, really testing conditions, it's quite humid up here on the Gold Coast, as you'd expect in uh, tropical Queensland. We will have some rain, so that whole issue of overheating, if driver aids fail, will come to the fore. And it's been something that's been a buzz here in the lane and I think over the last 10 days or so since we've been at Bathurst uh, we've got Chris Studs down in the lane for us to give us a bit of an update on all the supercars news but what's been the overwhelming message after what happened to Davey Reynolds at Bathurst Stubbsy? Well it's interesting just just going on from what you were talking about there I spoke to him a short time ago and he said that he was limping for a couple of days afterwards and his physiotherapist said he hadn't seen calves quite like it in terms of the damage that was done so as you said they'll have learnt their lessons from that but interesting when you compare it to the preparation for triple eight 
Now, my understanding is that there was a bit of anxiety building in the camp around Craig Lowndes in the days leading into Bathurst about the pressures and commitments that were going to be on his shoulders there, given that it was his last outing as a full-time driver. Now, they went to the lengths of having a meeting with the power brokers at Triple Eight to make sure that his time was so well managed to the minor detail of even getting him from the garage to the transporter. His track walk was done at 6am in the morning to avoid crowds. That was the level that they went to. So perhaps something that Erebus can learn there from the preparation at Triple Eight. In terms of the silly season, we're really reaching a flashpoint, are we, uh, in regards to that? Lee Holdsworth has now put his hand up and admitted he will not be at Team 18 next year. Now, that flows on from our report at Bathurst, where we spoke about the speculation linking Mark Winterbottom to Team 18. Now, that's still bubbling along, and I understand there's a real flashpoint in the negotiations with Tickford for Frosty. I think you could probably call that scenario stressed at the moment. So he may well still end up here. Another name that's been bandied around this weekend here in the lane is Jack LeBrock. I spoke to Jack a few moments ago about it. He just said no comment. Of course, team manager there and owner at Techno, John O'Webb, said to me, look, we'd like to keep him, so the ball is in his court. So that's the situation there. Another name at the moment, Michael Caruso. He's on the hunt for a new home. Now, that's not saying that Nissan don't want him or there's any issue there with regards to that relationship. They just have to get the commercial uh, arrangements in place to be able to keep Michael. So, of course, he is doing the rounds, making sure that he has other options if he has to go that way. So heaps unfolding, and I think we'll see more over this weekend as, as teams get to chat uh, with their sponsors here at a race meet. So looking forward to that one. In terms of the calendar, that was the big news, wasn't it, over the last week or so? Really well received by everyone in the lane, but it really has put pressure on co-driver selections for next year now that Bathurst is the kickoff for the Pertec Enduro Cup and the penultimate round of the championship is an Enduro at Sandown. Think about it, guys. If you were going for the championship and in your penultimate round you had a co-driver, they could very well make or break your tilt at a title, guys. Absolutely. That's that's 100%. And, you know, it's a really good point. I, I think what you'll find is what we used to do was we would go and do a rehearsal of Bathurst. We would actually go and do our own enduro. So they will want to book a test day mm. and go and do all the pit stops and run those enduro days to have your act in order because we see all those mistakes at Sandown. Now those mistakes will translate into Bathurst. They yeah, couldn't agree more. And how's it some of the driver movements that's going to be going on towards the end of the year? I reckon it's great. I like seeing a bit of movement around, both teams and drivers as well. Jeez, there's a bit on the card, so it yeah. should be interesting to see where all that falls. Silly <laughs> season in full swing. The calendar's an interesting one. It's been received really well, but there are some big changes. Night racing in Perth, what do we think of that? I think it's great. It's a really good venue for it. I think Perth will actually really grab that. It's the, the right sort of event for it. A little bit weird about Sydney, because Sydney was so successful, so mm. it looks like it's going back into 2020 so hopefully we'll end up with a Sydney Motorsport Park night, night event in the following year. I really like the calendar. I reckon they've done a real good job. If it wasn't, you know I'd tell you. Uh, <laughs> but, but I actually think it's a real good calendar. And actually, I know there's been a bit of controversy about Bathurst mm. being first one up. I actually think the positive there is that maybe because of the non-conflicting races for overseas drivers, you might get a few of them coming back over here too, which I'd love to see. I'd love to see some, some class guys come back over, you know, a willpower or whatever, do the races, because if they're not conflicting now, which I don't think they will be, most of the season uh, other motorsport events yeah. are finishing. Mate, we're great to see some real class name overseas drivers as co-drivers. Well, we caught up with Ryan Briscoe, didn't we, at Bathurst? He and and he said that really gave him a taste for yeah. it again, just being there yeah. in the atmosphere. So, yeah, fingers great. crossed, I'm sure, yeah. that'll be the next part of the silly season uh, as the year <laughs> unfolds. We're going to take a quick break here on Supercars Trackside. When we come back, seven-time Bathurst champion Craig Lowndes joins us live at the desk as he looks to close out the Pertec Enduro Cup here on the Gold Coast this weekend. He's up the inside. He will, don't make contact now. Don't make contact. Down the front straight. He's got him. It's a duel for the lead. Win Cup versus Van Gisbergen. The Kiwi against the defending series champion. This is an almighty dive into the chicane. Oh! And they make contact. Both of them go through and car number one pops out in front. Go to reserve, go to reserve team, please. They've got nothing left in the tank. The way he's going, it's Van Gisberg and all or nothing. This is the last lap, mate, just to catch you in This is the last lap, there will be a dive. And the only thing you can do is give him a serve. He'll bump him here. He'll bump him, run him wide. He can't do it. Wind Cup's going to hold on. Wind Cup has fought off an extreme. 
extraordinary battle. And he takes victory in a race to remember. <laughs> what a race. You've just witnessed something very special on the streets of Surfers Paradise. The Win Cup and Owen win race 20 of the championship. Holy smoke. Unbelievable. I reckon I can seriously say I've seen it all now. Makes a mistake. Does Lowndes get it done this time? Yes, he does. He's up far enough. Um, oh, my God. He, he runs it wide. And Lowndes is now all over the back of this thing. So this is a change for the lead. New leader of the race. Craig Lowndes is about to put another notch on his Bathurst belt. A seven-time winner at Mount Panorama. Congratulations, Craig Lowndes. What a story. From Auto by Lowndes Racing, it's Stephen Richards and Craig Welcome back to Supercars Trackside. Fairy tales do come true, and Craig Lowndes and Stephen Richards certainly proved that. The Bathurst 1000 this year, claiming uh, for Lowndesy his seventh victory, and it is great to welcome him here to the show. Yeah, Good thank afternoon. You. Thank you. How are you? Good to see you. What has life been like in the last 10 days as a seven time Bathurst champion? It doesn't feel like it's been seven days. It actually feels like a big blur. Like <laughs> we actually left Bathurst, and uh, you know, we hooked up the caravan. Lara drove from Bathurst to Sydney. I was on the phone that two and a half hours <laughs> and then of course you obviously the winners go back to Sydney we do the, the media run we went back to Red Bull we got on the road we only got back to Newcastle that night and then of course then drive home the rest of the, uh, the next couple of days so been a bit of a blur but of course we're now down here at GC 600 and uh, looking forward to the next round. Tell me about the celebrations because you and I <laughs> we had a lot of fun when we won right? Now, is Richo not here, has just not kept his end of the bargain up? Or what's, tell me what's gone no, on. No, no, it sort of happens when you get a bit older, you get right. a bit wiser. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, that was about 15 years ago. Yeah. It was sort of good then. You used to be able to bounce out of bed and bounce back, but you can't <laughs> yeah. do that anymore. So, right. um, But, yeah, look, we, we actually really physically haven't had a chance to catch up with, uh, you know, it was nice to see my dad in the podium there, but uh, Richo and even Irish, we just really haven't had a chance to catch up. So once we get this weekend out of the way, we'll, uh, you know, we'll hopefully sit down and have a drink. We'll that drink. could be one of the lamest excuses I've ever Drinking heard. Drinking out of those dirty boots probably didn't help oh, as well. Yeah. Paid him. Wrong. Look at this. Oh, no, what, what Richard oh. didn't tell me, he just completely changed his. So he had fresh boots. Oh. He had done a triple stint. Oh, so yours, oh. yours had I'm a sweaty. Yeah. Gunge in there. Oh, and, oh. terrible. Mate, how, so how good that. How good the result. <laughs> Apart from anything else, like everyone's been talking about, uh, I mean, not only the result, but you were so fast. I mean, it must be satisfying that you didn't jag the thing. No matter well, what happened, you, you got there because you were quick. Well, the car was quick in the end, and I think that was one of those things that we sat down and experienced, obviously, as you guys know, pays dividends there. And we made sure that the car wasn't going to be that good at the beginning, which it wasn't. But as the track evolved, the rubber went down, the car got faster. And in that last stand, it was really amazing to, to, uh, to really hunt down Dave Reynolds. And, and uh, to be honest, I didn't realise, I got the radio call that they had a problem with the car not him. And then when I realised that he's starting to cramp and doing all that, that was really amazing for me because that's something that obviously, you know, you guys again know how physical Bathurst is, but you're trained for it. And uh, he would have been devastated. I'm sure, you know, I saw Betty out the back and slumped over and like that team was the fast and the team to beat all weekend. So just take us through that because obviously triple stint's always hard. When you knew that you had to sprint to the end, well, you didn't have a helmet fan either, did you? No, I, I'd actually knocked it off going in in the car. Ah. And then, of course, we'd opt not to run a cool suit, just obviously for, you know, any problems. For driver changes? For or? driver changes and the whole thing, yeah. So, for me, I started to get a bit hot in that third and that last stint. But the, the two stints, and especially that second or the stint before, when we were doing qualifying laps, it was just like 6-1, 6-2, 6-3, 6-2, 6-2. And it was just on for young and old. And we closed the gap. And then, of course, that's when I got that radio call that the car nine had an issue. Didn't realise it was a physical issue. Wow. And did the boys, because they normally listen to our commentary, so did they actually say that it was Dave's problem then, or did they just say it was a car nine issue? Car nine issue, and that's all I knew. So when oh. I, And I, I remember coming out of turn one, we got a great run on him. It was almost the old Bowie you know, 94 yeah. thing, got a good slipstream up Mountain Straight, and then right at the point where I was just about to pull out to give the overlap, Irish gets on the radio and says, look, if you can't pass him, conserve fuel and we'll get him in the stop. I said, well, how about we just pass him? <laughs> yeah, I heard you say yeah. that. Good, so, cool, cool, cool. It was a good line right, that, right <laughs> It there. was one of those things that I didn't appreciate how how bad Dave was. And, and, and look, yeah, it, as I said, it's physical track, demanding, and, and, and you know, look, hopefully he bounced back this weekend. So you're leading the Pertec Enduro Cup by 60 points from 
your teammate, Shane Van Gisbergen, and Scott McLaughlin. How badly do you want to win that? And how can you add to the fairy tale here this weekend? Oh, to be able to do that, to climb that, to stand on the podium beside us here, um, holding that trophy really high at the end of the weekend. And for Richo and I, it'll be really sensational. It's the last time we drive together as a, as a duo. Last time here as a full-time driver. Everywhere I go, I think you always say the same thing. <laughs> but it's really nice and I think it's it's a credit for for us you know when I say us our side of the garage for Richo and I to be able to be consistent through these three races and it's not going to hurt with championship points either no well, we close it up to Jamie I think we're about 80 points off Jamie now we're a little bit shy off second and, and first but you know who knows still 900 points Absolutely. up for grab look at Bathurst <laughs> oh and, and this place here the concrete canyon a little place wrong you're in the fence, and of course, you lose that 150 points. A River Dirty Tour. What a tour it's been, <laughs> hey? You win Bathurst oh, on the River Dirty Tour, but you don't actually celebrate. I'm very disappointed in you. Do you know what I want to know? Yeah. This is this is the burning Here question everyone will have. What wooing has gone on from Jamie and Shane after you uh, won Bathurst for next year? Is that has that started yet? <laughs> hasn't. Well, if it has, I haven't heard it. Ah. So uh, yeah, whether it's that behind the closed doors back at the workshop, I don't know. But, but they've uh, got a bit of work to do then well, to get yeah, you across yeah. the line. Yes, don't ah. come. Cheap. What about okay. nine wins? <laughs> what about nine wins? Nice. Nine wins would be great. Well, what about nine wins? Well, That's achievable now. Well, if you take what Roland said after the race to you guys, I'm good for another five. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at uh, Richo and my record, I've got two wins in five years. Yep. Yeah. So that's potentially a good thing. Hey, if you, hey, if you go with Wink Cup, you'll have car washes for the rest of your life. <laughs> Free that, car That's washes. how he's going to pay me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing Jamie how tidy he is, it probably yeah. would be. But too. now that you've had time to, I guess, sit and contemplate what's happened over the last uh, two or so weeks, where does the win at Bathurst this year sit with the other six that you've collected? Oh, I think the 06 will always be the favourite, but this is really right up there. I think there's no doubt. Because the emotions, knowing we, we were really happy to be in the qualifying and in the top ten, knowing that now my future at Bathurst is a co-driver role, so that then now stops or precludes that. That's, a, that's the lead driver's role. So that's something that, for me, was really emotional. To do that lap and everything else, that was great. To start the race, to finish the race. Um, so for me, it was really... It, it's one of those emotional... Uh, and just, as I said, to see my dad... On the, under the podium once I got out of the car and he's the whole reason uh, why I'm actually doing this job because you know he's part of the old Holden dealer team back in the late 60s early 70s and, and really for me I grew up around the industry smelling you know the, the fumes and the burnt rubber and all that and that, that explains a bit <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it is it was really emotional and, no, and for great. dad to be there uh, I know he's, he's planning on being down at Newcastle for the final actual round right. that we're going to be there so to have the family support's really nice yeah, great, great story well, it was a fairy tale and we hope it continues news for you this weekend. A river Derchi. <laughs> See you across the weekend. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, let's take a look now at the championship as we head into the final three rounds of the season. Strong finishes at the mountain for both of our championship protagonists and it's meant that there's only 19 points between them. Scott McLaughlin claiming his first podium at Mount Panorama and it's put him within striking distance of Shane Van Gisbergen who has led the charge since Tail and Bend and it is great to welcome Scotty to the show. Good afternoon, young sir. Hey guys. How, How are you are going? We? All good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you good? Yeah. Now, congratulations on a terrific result at Bathurst. Talk us through the debrief. You must be incredibly proud to have been up there on the podium for the first time because Bathurst has been quite unkind to you over the last couple of yeah, years. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was fantastic to get up there and it's everything I dreamt of, but certainly when I got up there, I was like, well, I just want to go a couple of spots high. I was a bit <laughs> selfish about the whole thing. So yeah, it was, it was an unbelievable podium to be on with Lounsey and I've never seen so many people in one place. It was so loud. It was, it was, it was unbelievable. Hey, welcome to my world because yeah. the Nissan boos, they were bad. <laughs> Nissan, yeah. Nissan boos were a really high level, right? <laughs> yeah. There were beer cans being thrown, the whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah. You only got some, some minor boos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a few boos there, but oh, it's all part of it. Look, I, I always say, like, if we didn't have that rivalry between the two brands, you know, we wouldn't have our sport, how, how passionate they are. But oh, I just wanted to. I was telling, he's like, why are they booing? And I'm like, I don't know. Hey, let's uh, go with that. Uh, be a bit uh, he was like, what the hell? He, oh, he said a few words on there, but he didn't say it on the mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, w welcome to the rivalry between yeah. the two. But it is good, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's good there is so much passion between the two. Yeah, if we didn't have that. You know, we wouldn't have the, the great sport we have, and everyone knows that. And, and I love how much we have support. But it was different when I was at Volvo. I, I the Holden fans loved me when I bit the Fords, and then yeah. the, the Ford fans loved me when I bit the Holden. So I was yeah, either halfway. yeah, I was you, always you were really sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not too bad. Your, your result was sort of overshadowed a bit because obviously what happened with Lounge and there's big fanfare over that. But that was that was a damn good effort, like yeah. to get where you did. Uh, look, I think we we obviously the thing with Dave helped us jump the podium there. But I think we had a solid day. All, um, you know, all day we had a pretty fast car and. 
Um, we led for a little bit there and then just had a little bad rotor change that really hurt us. So um, to come back and get on the podium was a good result and to beat Shane, obviously. Yeah. Mm. So compared to the year before, because you dominated the year before, I mean, the, yeah. the pace for qualifying, the pace through the course of the weekend, I know it was a much different circumstance leading in, yeah. but it didn't seem like the car was quite as good as the year before versus the field because Dave Reynolds was slightly faster. Oh, absolutely. No, I think, you know, we, we probably didn't have that pace that we had. I think we were there or thereabouts in some ways. I felt like the track probably wasn't as quick because of the rain over the, the, those few days. We, so we definitely lost a couple of tenths there, but definitely I think the domination or the, the feeling I had in the car wasn't probably as, as, as good as it was the year before. But look, we learned, we, we've, we've played around with a few things. And I definitely felt in the race we were, we were a lot stronger than we were in practice. So you thought your pace was actually physically slower? Like now you've had a chance well, to go through and debrief about it. Yeah, I think at points, at points yeah. we, we sort of went a little bit the wrong way and then we sort of came back a little bit in the race and that was the right way. So we sort of take that you know, into into account and for future, hopefully you know, it's better next year. Yeah. yeah, we've seen you really dominate um, through periods of the year, particularly sort of in that mid-section and it's fallen off a little bit. I know Taylor Ben was a really tough round yeah. for you guys. Do you feel like you've got it back on track and what are you expecting here this weekend? Because this is a place that you really shine. Yeah, look, I love this place, but Taylor and Ben was a, it was a bit of a speed hump in the whole year for us and we had to rebound and I feel like even though we haven't had the outright pace um, over the last couple of rounds we've been right there and I think that's we've got our consistency back and we come to a track we won last year we learned a lot on the Sunday for car setup wise you could, our pace was fantastic and we'll come into this weekend with a pretty good you know idea of where we're going to be and you know, I'll be pretty disappointed we don't have a, a decent result this weekend. Is this where you take back the lead of the championship? I don't know, we'll see, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I, I, it's, <laughs> like, I absolutely love this place, have since I started, and, and you know, I, I can't, can't ask for a better race to you know, try and get it back. One of my favourite moments here is Scotty's pass, coming off the big chicane down the inside of the bottom. Do you remember that, that pass? That was fantastic. Uh, pass on Frosty. You and I <laughs> were ra it. raving. We've seen it a few times. Right down the and inside. And it, and it, and it's check this out. Check this out. out. This was so good. Yeah. Oh, the tyres were I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Frosty. He was pretty nice to me that day, but um, yeah, that was. Uh, I don't think you're going to stop anyway. I had about control now. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Check yeah. it out. It's pointing the wrong way. Yeah. I, like if it was a left hander, you'd be spot on. We had so much pace. Oh, that sorry, day. right hander, but yeah, oh, that was so good. The car was so good. It was like a go kart pass that one. I felt like I was going in with the <laughs> rear going in. It was really cool. But yeah, yeah. I think no you, pick, I think you picked up a lot of fans yeah. that day. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah. Frosty's yeah. fans probably weren't too happy, nah. but he was nice to me. <laughs> They'll yeah. get over it. Yeah, exactly. So as we head into the business end of the season, this is really where it counts. No one can make a mistake. What did you learn last year in your pursuit of the championship that you bring into this particular part? What will serve you well? Look, I think I came in here last year and I was like, oh my God, we haven't got that much time. But we actually do. There's a lot of points left on the table. So, but we need to be consistent and I'm just, I feel calmer. I just, you know, look, go out there, stick to our process, know what we've got to do. And, you know, we, 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 all we got to do is just stay in front of 97 and, and be there or thereabouts at the front and we, we'll get that lead back. I think that's good experience now, yes, that, is. That, that, that calmness is experience. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> A couple of years older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good luck, mate. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, Scotty, for Thank you. chatting to us. Good luck this weekend. Thanks and very much. Hope you're up there. Yep. Yeah, me too. You're nice. All right, time for a quick break here on Supercars Trackside. When we come back, Chaz Mostert and Cameron Waters joins us to debrief that awkward moment at Bathurst 1000. Plus, we'll get the latest from Tickford Racing. Stick around. Oh, dear. It's contact within the team. I've got to be joking. Come on. What happened, mate? Jazz got into the back of the left room at the elbow. So Mostert's made contact down the left-hand side at Forest Elbow. Both cars from Tickford Racing, so it must have broken steering arm. Yep, yep. So it's got a mind of its own, unfortunately, the Monster Energy Ford Falcon, and what a shame. Okay, left rear, mate, left rear. Steering, mate. Okay, copy, mate. We've just got 56 in the box now. Get back as best you can. Mate, I would have been his car on the straight. Not your fault, mate. And that is a sad sight. They'll have to bring that car back into the garage. Yeah, I don't know what Chaz is doing, just trying to pass him and put him in the fence. So, pretty dumb. 30 laps into the race. Two years in a row, we got taken out by Chaz. 
Welcome back to Supercars Track Size. A little awkward down there at Tickford Racing. Bathurst, thanks for being on the show, Chaz Mostert. Sorry hey, Chaz. No to worries. bring thanks that up again. The deep end. <laughs> yeah, a few terse words there from your teammate. How's the debrief? Uh, yeah, it was pretty tough. Obviously, I've had a pretty busy three weeks, including this. Um, yeah, so for me, straight over to America for Road Atlanta. And um, yeah, we tried to chat on the, the Sunday night. And uh, as you can aware, it's obviously not the team result that you want, but. Um, yeah, look, these, these things happen. It's, um, you've seen it plenty of times down pit lane. Um, you've got to talk about it and kind of shrug it off and keep moving forward and, and focus back on this weekend. So, uh, yeah, we haven't actually had, well, me personally, haven't had time to really sit down and uh, go through it all. But, um, you know, this time will probably come after this weekend. This stuff always happens. I mean, whether you're a teammate or you're not, the, those incidents are always, you know, they're dramatic. And, and now, when you get on with this weekend, are they talking? Is everyone sort of half civil down there? Is it all fine? You've got a haircut. You've had time for a haircut. That's yeah, good. had, That's had good time for a haircut. Right? So, yeah, that wasn't too bad the day I got back. But, uh, it's look, that, I reckon. it's one of those things. It's faster. You never, ever want to make contact with your teammate. You don't go out there to do that. So, um, yeah, look, there's got some. we've got some talking to do and some working out to do. There's no secret behind that. And um, we'll, come, we'll come back off it better after this weekend. So, you know, as the job is this weekend to get the best result for the team, uh, Cam will be driving as hard as he can, D Russ will be driving as hard as can and will be driving as hard as he can to try and get a surfboard this weekend because last year as a team effort yep. we went 1-2 on the sad day and uh, we'd like to try and do that again so but if it you know last year was rain and we were quite quick in the rain but we want to try and do it in the dry as well so yeah we're looking forward to it. So you and Cam okay? Yep. Yeah? We're good. All right well let's find out because Russ is standing by with Cameron Waters. Russ? Yeah, guys, I am down with Cam. No, we had a bit of a chat uh, away from the camera, and I tell you what, he is dark. He is so dark about it. He said something about Chaz being a flog, uh, something of that sort of nature. Like, I tell you what, the feeling, he reckons he's going to fence Chaz this weekend. So, Cam, what do you think about it all? Mate, I've never heard so much dribble come out of your mouth. Well, and I've been watching you for a long time. Mate, in TV, don't let facts get in the way of a good story, <laughs> all right? But, uh, no, I mean... <laughs> It was, on a serious note, it was pretty disappointing. And, man, you were fired up big style. Yeah, oh, 100%. Obviously, it's um, never ideal when your car ends up in the fence. And there's obviously, it's the biggest race of the year. There's always a lot of emotion in it. And you see all the, the work that the team and everyone put in. And um, obviously, you see that and, and you're going to let a bit of emotion out. But, um, yeah, we've spoke about it. Obviously, nothing's intentional. You never, ever want that to happen and, and whatnot. But, um, yeah, is what it is. You just move on. But you've had a chance to look at it. So you've had a week and you've probably replayed the video a few times. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it was as bad as what you thought it was on the initial hit? Oh, look, I, I actually haven't really looked at it that many times. I, um, I saw it on the day and, yeah. um, obviously, Chaz, he... There was two things. D-Russ kind of gave him room. D-Russ was always going to let him through. Um, and then Chaz has obviously seen a, a gap and um, it looked pretty inviting, I guess. And he's really tried to do the, the it, best thing he could of, and tried to stay left. Sort of looked a bit clumsy. Sort yeah, of looked all... a bit clumsy. I, I mean, I, uh, for sure Chaz wouldn't have done a delivery. Nah. You know that. And the, the, and the, the thing end is, of the you, I think you nailed it. Like, it, it did look a bit clumsy. And D-Russ probably wasn't sure what was going on. Chaz wasn't sure if there was a gap. Um, what really happened is he, he clipped the inside fence and that's what set it all off. Mm. But it's not intentional, mate. It is what it is. You, um, you always are going to show a bit of emotion, but really you just got to move on for, for everyone, for the team. Um, you come here, you're at Gold Coast. We're racing this weekend, so you just put it behind you. But at the end of the day, if the roles were reversed, would you have gone in the hole? Oh, yeah, look, probably. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You can't really... <laughs> Like you are a racer, so, you would have got in there. Yeah, 100%. There's a gap there, you're going to try and fill it. But um, I think even Chaz, like he, he filled it, but he clipped the inside fence. That's what, what set it off. So, like I said, mate, it is what it is. It's behind us. We'll move on. Mate, you'll go good this weekend. You know you always go hot here, so you'll be right. So, I think, I think you can safely say that uh, these two have put it to bed now and they're going to get on with racing. And uh, these are two of the best around this circuit, Jess. Yeah, and we've certainly put them in the hot seat today, haven't we? It's a yeah. setup. Yeah, That's a setup. Little, I think uh, the awkward. thing you guys are trying to do is get me and Cam to box on, but the real problem is here is you guys are still at Eastern Creek. You know, oh, you and great. Russell, and you know, I'm actually I think I thought you might have been wrong, but now I'm on your side, Scafey. Yeah. Russell, he <laughs> he was uncalled for. I'll right. tell you oh, what, he couldn't you, drive Chaz. a greasy stick up a reckon I reckon Chaz and I are the bigger people here because we've already moved on. You guys still hold on to it. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey uh, 15 anyway, years. it's time to go to a break now. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no it's not. You, you've so. made a really good point there, Cam. I feel like you and Shaz have got a few lessons that you can teach these old blokes. Oh, yeah. what, young yeah. guys teaching old 
old bloke's new tricks. Yeah. Totally. You've Good luck with that. 15 years. You could say sorry. If you just Leave say sorry, it's fine. I'll, I'll organise lunch say for it. all of you. Say sorry. Right. Just say sorry. Oh, I'm sorry I got on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we oh, are too. Oh. Thank you ever going to get, mate. Thanks, Cam. All the best this Thank weekend. You. It was a really good weekend, as you alluded to, for the team here last year. And all of that aside, you had a fantastic result at Bathurst, mm. just missing out on the podium. Um, does that go some ways to erasing some of the disappointment that you've had this year? Because it, it seems like you've turned a corner um, in terms of your car pace and, and the way that the team's operating. Is that the reality? Look, it's, it's actually really hard to comment on. You've got to look at Bathurst as a bit of a separate race to everything else. To be fast at Bathurst, uh, it requires different things than this track and obviously different tyre, all those type of things as well. So I think on the, the harder compound tyre, we haven't been as weak. This weekend is probably one that we would really struggle at. So the, um, now to the end of the year, it's about trying to, to really just get on top of our little things that are niggling us away. But I think we've showed probably in the last five or so rounds that we have been making better stuff and we've been moving forward as a team. If it's not as all four cars together, one car's been competitive, uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I think we, we are learning, we are moving forward. Um, but, you know, until all four cars are up there, that's when we can confirm it to you guys that we, we have been finding stuff. But you know what it's like, this, down this category, it is getting harder and harder. Uh, look at last year, you know, we've got three wins and some podiums. Um, you know, Cam got the 500 last year. Um, it's just, it stepped up and um, yeah, we're just trying to chase as, as best we can and um, I'm looking forward to this weekend, so we'll just see how we go. I'll tell you who I was impressed with was uh, James Moffat. I thought that Moffat did a really good job with you at Bathurst. Uh, to, to be honest, I don't think we would have finished fourth without James. We really chucked him in the deep end and he really he really went toe-to-toe -to -toe with those um, well, with, the, the, with, the, with, with the main drivers. Yep. And you kind of saw uh, credit to Jack Perkins too. He did that at the 500 and he did really well. So you got to give credit to the co-drivers all the way down the field there being asked a pretty big task, three races of the year, and you're putting them up against guys that have already raced eight or nine times through the year in, in that car. So um, this is what makes this category really good. You just see different drivers stepping up more and more each year and uh, ne not necessarily the main guys. So it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, it's very good. I know that you were really disappointed to have missed out on the shootout at Bathurst. You know, there's absolutely nothing in it, but you get two opportunities here this weekend. You're a local boy. You know that the crowd will be out in force. What is it like to be part of a shootout here? I mean, how cool is that moment? How badly do you want to be in that session? Uh, yeah, obviously, top 10 shootout is everything at Bathurst, and, and even is, is here too, as well. But I was kind of lucky at Bathurst. I decided to go stand up on the top of the hill and, and watch the guys cro go across there. And a little bit of super fan out in me de deep down the side. It was pretty cool hearing the cars come across. But yeah, top 10 any day on any track is what it's all about. To have the track dedicated for you for one lap at, at your best, um, you know, we really got to step up. So it's, uh, yeah, looking forward to this weekend. Hopefully, we can get some car pace and get in that 10. And, and have a real red, red hot crack. Good luck, mate. Yeah, we should actually, yeah. before we let you go, say congratulations on your class podium at yes, Petit Le Mans. Job. Well done. What was that experience like? And how has that, I guess, inspired you and invigorated you for the back end of this season? Yeah, I don't want to take too much credit for getting third at, um, at Road Atlanta, but I had two awesome teammates and awesome, awesome team as well with RLL. And, um, you know, for me, they really carried me. So uh, <laughs> I was pretty lucky. I just did the lunchtime stint. They were all eating ice creams and uh, doing the lunchtime thing. And, yeah, basically just gave back the car back straight and they really got it up the pointy end. So. Did you run the haircut over there or is that a local thing? <laughs> no, no, I got it when I got back. I had right. to get my hairdresser back here. Good so, um, yeah, Good appreciate work. that. Oh. Fit me in at, at late notice. The speed of that, I for mean, sure. you're really going to miss all the jabs, aren't you now, about your hair. This has been an ongoing saga for Can't help it. two years. Well, so. it doesn't matter. I get jabs with what I do on track now other than my haircut, so <laughs> it, it, it's never really uh, a downside on this show. Oh, well, you're looking very handsome. Congratulations on a great result at Bathurst and, of course, overseas. Good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. What well mate. All right. Time for a quick break here on Supercars Trackside. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at this very intense and entertaining circuit here on the streets of Surface Paradise. Stay with us. Gold Coast 600, the last of, uh, you know, a pretty gruelling endurance season. This heaven will shake upon the way. To be honest, everyone goes there and just goes nuts. What about oh, the attitude oh, of the wow. car through there? Big lock up. Oh. A wild weekend. It's a big party atmosphere. There's always lots of sun and lots of people, and it's one of the great events that supercars go to. 
The track is so wicked, it's so high risk. If you're not up to going close to concrete walls and pushing the car to its absolute limit, then you're not going to go well at that event. Pretty demanding and challenging for the drivers. It's so good when you nail a good race around there. There's no better feeling than driving a perfect race, millimetre perfect lap on the lap. That's what we all go there to get is that surfboard and it's good fun, good fun weekend. Yes, we're really looking forward to an entertaining weekend of racing here on the Gold Coast and we alluded to it a little earlier in the show, there is actually some rain forecast across the weekend which just adds another level of challenge to this concrete canyon. Now I've actually worked out that it's Earl Bamber's fault for the rain. Every oh. single session that he has done in a supercar, <laughs> it has rained. But this is a really, really demanding circuit scape. It's brutal on the cars and it absolutely demands precision and perfection from the driver. It does and it's about commitment, Jess, without making a mistake. It's basically lined with concrete walls. You make the slightest mistake and it's on for young and old. Turn four is the passing spot. So out of the first chicane, down to turn four, that's the best passing spot. And then up this big long run on along the beach to 245k for this amazing big fast chicane. We love this section, don't we? This is a good, and it sucks you in because you keep thinking, oh, I can go a bit quicker, I can go a bit quicker. And then if you do, <laughs> get ready for turn 10 because coming out of there, if you run out of talent, she's straight in that wall and she's game over. But th this is a fantastic corner, isn't it? That's the one that we just, uh, we spoke to Scotty McLaughlin about it. We fired down the inside there at Mark Winterbottom. This little section here is pretty much street circuit savvy, 90 degrees all different surfaces, manhole covers, curbs. It's very, very high in terms of bumps. It rates very high, second on the whole of our tour. And the way that this place unfolds, to try to make the car drive out of the slow corners and to make it stop for those very complex chicanes is always tough. So let's have a look at the great passing spots because always from the start, this is Chaz Mostert, that's Jack Perkins. Have a look now in a second. It goes to turn into turn four and there's a Cam Waters. So it's very easy to get involved in, in the congestion. This is another pass, a separate move here from Cam Waters, straight down the inside. This is the typical pass at that section. Yeah, turn four is great because it's such a slow corner. So a lot of people actually use first gear, especially when you go down this tight line. And if you give them a bit of a bump, as Scotty did there, I mean, it's an e well, I won't say an easy pass, but I'll tell you what, we've seen some mayhem down in those corners. We certainly and have. Speaking of mayhem. This is, this is the mayhem, so the littlest bump has the on-flow effect of bumping into the others and the concertina of cars going into turn four is always a drama. So Look at that. Look that's at that one bump. end. So that's the that's the opposite end of the track. The other end <laughs> is the northern end, and we call this the bump and run. So coming out of the final turn, turn 14, teammates, even the teammates, teammates getting involved in the bump and run. That's so good, because as soon as you unsettle them coming off this corner, and that's why they lean on the back. Look, a bit of push, bit of push, bit of push. As soon as you get that, kills their speed, you can draw up alongside. Uh, I'm not sure how legal it is, but... Oh, oh, you, you, would, you wouldn't have done it. Mate, I've, no. I've nailed plenty through here. <laughs> doing this sort of thing, How many people do you reckon what, you've done that to? It's an absolute favourite. The That's list a, is long and distinguished. It, it is. <laughs> Check, look, I'm not sure about this one. These... The, the actual podium got reversed on this one, but I think Mark Woodenbottom actually had it. It wasn't I, too much of a touch-up. I, I agree. I don't reckon that was nah, very bad that at all. that was pretty That's, soft. In your world, that was soft. Craig Baird, our, uh, our it officiator. Wasn't, it wasn't him. He, he wouldn't have let it go. It he wasn't, yeah, exactly. He, he wouldn't have let it go. go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so it's a great circuit. Great it's circuit. got lots of overtaking spots, and the drama about it is if you don't qualify near the front, it's chaos. Yes. My favourite thing is Russell's honesty, and I believe really? that's the corner he misses most. Yeah, the last right. one there yeah. where he pushed everybody. <laughs> no, there's a lot of corners he pushes people off. There's, that is not the only corner. Right. There's a lot of them. I feel like you know that very well. I fixed up there once. Yes, I know you and, and he came down to the pits and wanted to fight me, but I was eating ice cream and I couldn't. Oh, really? Yeah, he came down. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway. On that note, gentlemen, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, it's yes. been a really fun show. Looking forward to a big weekend here. <laughs> yes. We'll see you bright and early see tomorrow you. morning. <laughs> now, make sure you tune into our live coverage here on Fox Sports. It all kicks off tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It's obviously a big day of practice and we are expecting intermittent showers across the weekend. We'll have a qualifying, a top 10 shootout and 300 kilometres uh, on both Saturday and Sunday. Of course, it is all live with no ad breaks during racing. Thanks so much for joining us here on Supercars Trackside. We hope you've enjoyed the show. From all of the team, have a great evening and we'll see you here across the weekend.